Hey, 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 everyone. It's One Take T's first time where I try something I've never made before. And this week, we are going hunting for morel mushrooms. One take two. here in the burn and we are looking for some morel mushrooms and they say that they might be a little tricky to see at first but I think we have found them and I see a few more over here so we are going to get our gear and get equipped and see if we can do some harvesting. Okay, so we found the morel, and you're supposed to slice them off so that they regrow. And the way you can tell is if they're legit morels or not is that they're hollow inside. So that looks good, guys. And the other thing they say, it should be about the size of your thumb. And bingo, bango, bongo. Are you finding any over there? Yeah, we found a few patches. And oh. I'm finding they're underneath the, the broken branches on the ground. Okay, awesome. Thank you. So basically, once you find one, you just look around and they're everywhere. And you might not see them at first. They're pretty camouflaged, but they're there. So I don't know if you can see it very well, but there seems to be sort of this little trench. And I don't know if it's where there used to be the root of a tree. But it seems that that's where they grow. So, for example, here, there's one right here. Oops. And then if I just move further on, there's another one right there. And if I look up, I actually see more. We have got our morel processing station set up. And morale is high. <laughs> Can you say that again? And morale is high. Oh boy. Um, so we've divided <laughs> them into different sizes and then we're just cutting off the stems and then using little paint brushes um, to remove the excess dirt. And then we've got the little ones on de a dehydrator rack so that can, they can dry in the dehydrator. Here is the final product. The big ones we sliced in half so that they would dry better. And we brushed them off, trimmed the stems, tapped the dirt off them. Here are the morels we've got drying in the dehydrator. Five layers deep. So guys, we're here at the end of a long day of mushroom picking and we're pooped, but it would be insane if we did not use our freshly picked morels to make a little dinner. So, which ones look good? Oh yeah, throw them in there. Beautiful. Can you maybe see one? Yeah, look at this mama jama. Mmm, gorge. Okay, let's get this started. We're gonna start by melting some butter in the pan. Yes. 
Once the butter's melted, we're gonna add in the garlic. How many cloves is that, five? Mm-hmm. I'm just going to brown up the garlic a little bit. those beauties. Can't see what I'm doing in there. <laughs> oh, we got the water boiling here, so we're going to throw our gnocchi in. <laughs> Try not to burn yourself. <laughs> at about five here. Is that about right? Yep. So, how long do we cook these now? Uh, just until they're cooked, basically. Like, do they get crispy? No. They kind of, you cook them, but then we're going to cover them in melted butter and olive oil. Okay. So, they'll, they'll, they'll always be kind of nice and chewy. Okay. Yeah. So we just are cooking the gnocchi according to the package. Gnocchi. Which said basically two to three minutes. So as soon as they start to float to the top, we'll strain them and then put them aside. So those are ready. Now we're just gonna test a little mushroom to make sure it's done. Where'd my fork go? Mmm, meaty. Mmm, tastes like it's from the forest. I think it needs a little more salt and pepper though. Mmm, great. Okay, I think these mushrooms are ready. So we're gonna add the rest of the butter, our basil, oh yeah, and then some extra virgin olive oil. And so we're supposed to finish this with some Parmesan cheese, which we don't have. So we're having a little bit of a debate as to whether we should plate the gnocchi and then put the mushrooms on top. I'm kind of of the opinion that we should toss the gnocchi in the mushrooms so everything gets really nice and coated with all that flavor. So I think that's what we're gonna do. Um, so let's get that gnocchi in the pan. Do you disagree, Marsha? I just like the part it was a discussion, but this is what we're doing. <laughs> Executive decision. <laughs> this is my channel. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> It's meant to be finished with some parsley and some shavings of parmesan, but we didn't have any, but this will do. All right, let's try this out. Thank you so much, Marsha and Melina, for not only going and picking morels with me, but teaching me this fabulous new recipe. Oh my God. I don't even need the gnocchi, I can just eat the mushrooms. Mmm. Oh my god. They're so good. We're going back out tomorrow. <laughs> it's happening. Oh yeah. Mushroom patrol. One take Tara. <laughs> Alright. Day two. Not that that makes us experts or anything. But uh, we thought while we process our latest batch, we share some of the things that we learned over the past couple of days because it has been a pretty steep learning curve, wouldn't it you has say? Been, yeah. yeah. We're doing great. So, uh, one thing that I'd like to say just before 
we get started was we found that this little tapping technique uh, works really well uh, for getting the dirt out of the little crevices. But you got you still got to be pretty gentle because otherwise you'll crush the mushroom. But when you tap it, everything seems to fall out. What do you think is uh, the first major thing we learned, Marsh? Um, well, I think like that one thing that I, maybe is the temperature of the forest fire. And like, so if it's like soup in a super burnt area, we weren't finding any mushrooms. Uh. But then if it was in an area that was, you know, burnt, but there was still some, some survived maybe, I don't know. Yeah, I think everything that got charred, there wasn't really much sign of mushrooms. And I think in also in areas where the the moss was super, super mm. thick, yeah. the mushrooms, even if it was completely burnt, the mushrooms still couldn't sort of make their way out of the moss. Uh, so we did tend to find the mushrooms in like lower little dips and stuff in between the roots of the white spruce yeah like in between the the roots of the spruce trees and sort of where roots may have been at some point um and maybe were burnt out or maybe where the water was flowing as well like you know rain um runoff so and then places where there was a bit more moisture also mm -hmm. so that would make sense and be in line with what we were seeing. Yeah, the ones that we found today seemed a lot meatier and they also seemed a little bit fresher. Uh, some of the ones we got yesterday were a bit dried out. So, I mean, that was a learning thing too, to see like the quality. Um, so these ones we got were really nice. Well, and I think it's also like with everything, the more times you do it, the better you get. But we haven't thrown out any of our mushrooms today. And yesterday we threw out a whole pail because they were kind of mealy and over. Yeah, that's one thing, like when we cut the stems, sometimes if it was a bit, oh, I guess of an older mushroom, it would actually like crumble a bit. So we decided to throw those ones out, but these ones uh, stay intact pretty good. And then like this one was my one reject I had so far today. And I think it's a false morel because it doesn't really have that hollow cavity inside and um, it's really dense. So I, th I think either way, like even if it's not a false morel, it's not gonna dry very well. So what else? Oh, north, south facing. I mean, we read that they would be more um, uh, readily available on a south facing slope. So we were mostly looking on south facing slopes. Although today we did find a bunch on north facing slope and we didn't know if they were there because people hadn't actually gone there to pick because it was a north facing slope um but they're definitely on north facing slopes maybe they take a bit longer to come out and they don't come out as um early as on south facing slopes that makes sense what else oh well for drying oh, yeah. yeah uh we had our morels drying well we had the little ones that we got yesterday in the dehydrator but uh, my dehydrator racks are pretty small, so we can't put the, the big, any bigger ones in there. So we just made these screens and we had a fan on them. Well, we didn't have, we had a little fan on them last night um, and they dried out a little bit, but then at lunchtime, John Matt put a big, powerful fan on it. And just in the time we went picking and came back, they were substantially drier. So I think airflow is super important for drying them. And obviously it would make sense to wanna to dry them as rapidly as possible so that they don't um, they don't decompose or go bad. And we've noticed that these mushrooms, I mean, I don't think they'll last very long. I don't think, they'll sp I think they'll spoil pretty quickly because even just um, in the time it took to pick them and then get them back, and I mean, we haven't really wasted any time. We started processing them right away. I mean, you can already tell that they are a little bit, just a little bit more crumbly. Mm -hmm. They're a little bit drier. So they don't last long. Fresh. Yeah. Eat them fresh if you're going to eat them. Um, and then if not, get them dehydrating as quickly as possible, I would say. Is there any other things you can think of, Marsh? Not really. I kind of covered my... Our knowledge of the... Our knowledge, yeah. So just keep in mind, people, that 
we are by no means experts and don't quote us but um but it's really fun i'm really glad we spent that time doing it it's yeah nice to learn we and had do beautiful weather it was hot we had to stay hydrated oh so things to take with you mushroom picking make sure you have a bucket uh, we took little ice cream pails and then we dumped them into like a bigger bus pan as we were picking them we kept them out of the shade or we kept them in the shade after they were harvested we made sure we had knives so that we could cut them off at the roots apparently people say that if you cut them at the roots they'll grow back i don't know but we wanted to make sure that we were leaving the option for them to grow back if they wanted to so we were cutting them with just little paring knives or pocket knives and uh, you definitely want bug spray. Bugs can be bad. You definitely want water. It gets hot in there because the whole forest is black. Um, what else? You want to, I don't know. I think that's, I think I that's it. it. Maybe yeah. sunscreen. I didn't have any on today, but um, today. yeah, it was, it was really nice out there. I don't think I burnt though. Um, it, it does get dusty though. Like at one point I was choking a little bit on the dust, but, um, just things to be aware of, but it wasn't like unpleasant. And everyone said that you get like so dirty when you're out there. And I mean, yeah, definitely I'm dirty, but I didn't find that I was just covered head to toe in suit until you took your pants off. Oh yeah. So <laughs> we, I rolled up my pants today. Well, yesterday I was wearing sort of more tights that were like tapered at the bottom and then today I wore like sort of more of like a straight leg pants and I didn't did cross my mind that I should tuck them into my shoes or tuck my pants into my socks but I didn't and then we stopped at a little lake on the way home and I pulled up my pants to stick my feet in the water and my legs are like blackened underneath my pants so uh <laughs> the ashes definitely got in there <laughs> um but yeah I think that's about it so we're just gonna keep uh, processing here and uh, if you get the opportunity to go do this I would highly encourage it it was it's been a really a fun adventure and a way to get out into get the bush your get your <laughs> steps in get your exercise get some fresh air um, make sure you take your bear banger bear spray although we had no issues with that but you know safety in the wilderness and yeah I'm really excited to try some more recipes using these fabulous little delicacies of the north. Well, I guess they're found everywhere, but they're also found in central Yukon, which is where we are. I would like to just share a few last thoughts before I close out this video. First of all, um, with the screens, we found that they shrunk substantially, but we did have a night of rain. So when I came out the next morning, it seemed like they had almost rehydrated a bit. So what we ended up doing for the bigger ones was dehydrating them partially on the screen. And then by that time, they were small enough that they could fit into the dehydrator so we finished them in the dehydrator because we wanted to make sure there was absolutely no moisture in them uh, for uh, so that they wouldn't spoil um, and the shrinkage of the mushrooms is really quite amazing they reduced down quite substantially apparently they shrink to one tenth their original size or weight i should say when they are dehydrated. Now, we, in all the excitement, we did forget to weigh them when we started, but I will try to get a dry weight so we can just get an idea of the value, not that we intend to sell them, but the value of them compared to our picking time. Um, as for storage, I've read that they are best stored in freezer bags or in glass jars, and that you can keep them in the freezer or store them in a cool dark cupboard. We also tested the rehydration time and we found that it took about 20 minutes rehydrating them in water. I've also read that you can rehydrate them in half and half or milk and that you can actually use that soaking liquid if you plan on making a gravy or a sauce. I think that's about it. Good luck and I'll see you out in the forest. Bye bye.